Hello everyone, I am Crawlers and uh, this is one of my first rounds as uh, Commander in Battlefield 4. Actually, I think it's my second round as Commander. Now that I've been playing, you know, Battlefield 4 for a couple of days, but, uh, you know, because you need to be at least level 10 to be Commander as a sort of you know, natural selection to weed out the Bambis by dice. I haven't been able to record any actual uh, commander gameplay until now. And as such, I will try to explain, to get across some of my first impressions of the um, commander mode in Battlefield 4. And, uh, you know, give you a few tactical ideas just my thoughts, you know, while I'm at it. I am, after all, the tactical Russian. And, you know, I PTFO even with 0% health. So, uh, now as as commander, it, be, it becomes that much more important to PTFO. Because um, the commander really has no other way of playing, of influencing the battlefield, you know. He cannot actively go out there and uh, actually shoot someone. Well, except for rare occasions, I guess. But, you know, this conversely means that he cannot be killed himself. So, you know, you cannot go out there, find the commander and shoot him, I guess. And leave the team commanderless, as it were. Now, um, this... This gameplay is on PC, but don't worry, I will also be PTFOing on my iPad while taking a shit, so just try and stop me. Now, the general idea of the commander, I think, is to think one step ahead of his team on the ground and, uh, you know, provide support and maybe orders to attack or defend an objective and maybe launch an offensive missile strike once in a while. And, you know, while everyone lives for that missile, one, one missile strike, most of your time will be spent doing boring UAV scans and such. And uh, the job of the team on the ground, or more specifically, the individual squads is to obey the orders that you as commander hand down. Now, obviously they don't have to obey the orders. I mean, uh, the great dice developer in the sky knows that they can tell you to fuck off, basically, and go about their own business. This is why they have to trust you as commander, you know. Uh, this is why you have to give orders that make sense. Um, another job of the commander is to stay ahead and uh, anticipate every move of the other team's commander. It basically becomes a game of chess. So, you know, whoever can outthink the other guy will win. And I will get into that in a minute. Now, um, let's go into the specifics of the battle screen that the commander has at his disposal. I mean, the specific controls, you know, how they look in Battlefield 4. I'm sure some of you are already familiar with uh, Battlefield 2's commander, so, uh, you know, I won't uh, pretend to make a fool of myself and explain to you what commanding is. I'm just going to explain some of the controls that are specific to this game. And uh, now, um, the battle screen is an interactive map, uh, the, uh, and the only way a commander has of accessing the battlefield, obviously. So, let's go through the visual cues here. To the top left of the screen, you have the available actions to you right now. Don't click them to use them, they are only pictures. As they are used, each action has a cooldown period, like uh, a couple of seconds for a UAV 
and a lot more for the tomahawk missile, which I'll get to in a second. Um, that cooldown will display as a bar feeling that action uh, that is being reloaded. So some of these actions, like the missile strike and the gunship, are objective dependent. Uh, so um, in order to have the missile strike available on this map, uh, the Siege of Shanghai, you must cap the sea flag. Now, um, below that, in the middle part of the screen, uh, in the middle part of the left side of the screen, is the individual squad's perks. Uh, these will be different for each squad that you select on the right top of your screen. Below that is the ticket count and the flags taken uh, graphic, and below that is the live feed camera of uh, wherever you click on the map. That's pretty simple, isn't it? And as I said, to the right you only have the individual squads listed. Now, the map is interactive, and you can click it to see a list of available actions. And by the way, you can center these actions anywhere and not necessarily on an objective. So, your list includes the following orders. From top to bottom, you have the EVAC order, an EMP UAV, ironically, and a regular scan UAV, an attack order, a supply drop, which resupplies ammo and has the ability to swap out kits in the field, uh, you know, without respawning, and a vehicle drop, which drops an ATV or an Arhib boat, uh, defend, depending on the map. To the right, you have the infantry scan, which scans the whole battlefield once, uh, only once left to right, to reveal the enemy uh, infantry. A vehicle scan, which scans the battlefield uh, once to uh, bottom to top to reveal enemy armor. A and an offensive action like the gunship, or in the case of this map, the Tomahawk missile. Now, um, these offensive uh, or defensive actions are objective dependent. And as I said, on this map, flag C controls the Tomahawk. So, you know, whichever team holds flag C that commander will wield the Tomahawk missile strike. And boy, what a missile. It's like, honestly, it's like a f the finger of God. Now, um, one quick word about these actions. Uh, the other commander will be able to see where your UAV and EMP are deployed. So you must use these things wisely. Um, sometimes they can even be used as a diversion tool to fool the other commander into looking the other way. Um, let's say you throw an EMP drone somewhere over a flag to make the commander look at it, you know, on the right side of the flag uh, of the map. Uh, let's say to make the other commander look at it and think. Well, that's where they are playing to attack, because they just put out a, an, a, an EMP there. And meanwhile, you shove a tomahawk up his ass on the left side of the map. So, um, you know, you gotta think tactically here. Come up at it, come at it from different angles. Now, some things about the UAV and EMP drones. They will circle the given point for 10 seconds after which uh, they will go down for a second, I believe. I may be wrong about these, these are the, just the numbers that I came up with, you know, looking at the map and measuring it in, in uh, the uh, gameplay that I recorded. Now, uh, you as commander will get points for just about everything, like uh, UAV assists and EMP assists, and if someone uses your uh, supply drop, 
uh, you will get points. But um, you gotta think tactically when using the UAVs. I mean, you don't just throw down a UAV where the other commander has just thrown down an EMP. Also, um, the Tomahawk missile will take around 20 agonizingly long seconds to reach the target. Uh, and obviously it will not be controllable after launch, so uh, this means that your targeting skills must be spot on. You can obviously zoom in on the target, but uh, the, the better hope, uh, you know, you better hope that uh, it doesn't move, move for the next 20 seconds. Because while it has an amazing blast radius and pretty much wipes out everything in its path, you still need to hit something with it to kill it. So, um, you know, don't try and go for moving targets like moving tanks and such. Because that will just be a waste of a good, perfectly good missile. And don't try to put down a Tomahawk missile strike on a single sniper camper at the edge of the map. Because, well, you will kill the sniper, you know, that's just wasting a missile on one, one en single enemy. And that's just not a good use of resources. Now, my own strategy here, and this is just my own tactical thoughts here, is to uh, time the strike on some sort of armor that is capping your flag. Let's say a tank rolls up on the flag and starts capping it. Well, it's reasonable to think then that it's going to hang around for, usually in the same spot more or less, for over 20 seconds. And this is when you strike. Um, other stationary targets make for good tomahawk strikes, uh, like a mobile artillery truck that is pretty much standing in the same place for a long time, or a stationary ATGM launcher. Just make sure it's manned before you fire, you know, because a cruise missiles, uh, they, they take around 60 seconds to reload. And, uh, you know, by that time your flag may be capped and you might be out of Tomahawk missiles. Also, enemy missile strikes will be visible to you. So, uh, you know, so you must look at where they are targeted because the target will also be visible to you on the map. This is the time to issue some evac orders and... Uh, you know, hope that they are being followed. Because when that missile hits, you know, be somewhere else. Now, a quick word about squad orders. As I said, you can give individual squads orders, but they do not have to follow them, obviously. If they do, you get a few points, but very little. To give a squad orders, select it from a squad list by clicking on it or in the field, uh, or on the right side of the screen, and select the upwards pointing triangle to issue the order when right-clicking on a target that you want it to hit. Um, several things to keep in mind here. Obviously, you want to select the closest squad for that particular job, uh, for that particular objective, and not someone from across the map, because they will, you know, just laugh at you. Another thing is that you can give the same objective to several squads. But this doesn't mean that the farthest squad on the map has to be ignored. No. Give them orders and airdrops as well. You know, keep them in the loop. They are like children, you know. You can't ignore several in favor of just one, you know. Uh, now, the, a commander can also single out a high-value target for his team to kill. This means a particular, particularly pesky player on the opposite team who is doing too much damage can be highlighted and selected as an HVT. Uh, this will put a dotted box around him for a few seconds, uh, 45 if memory serves, and whoever bags the HVT gets a bonus. 
Uh, conversely, the same can happen to your own players. Uh, these HVT selections are visible to both commanders, so think before you start mashing buttons. Because obviously, a team gets a bonus if they uh, protect uh, the HVT, I mean, and the HVT gets a bonus while he kills someone while he is designated a, as an HVT. So, thanks for watching. Please rate, share this video, and uh, check out my other videos at the end of this one. And remember, in Soviet Russia, YouTube subscribes you.